Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to this online lecture session. So today we will discuss about the network layer which is the layer just below the application and transport layer and the network layer is well above the physical and data link layer in our OSI model of computer networks. So let's move to the next slide and this is the chapter 3 in our book and uh, as you know in previous um, lectures we learned that transport layer provides various forms of process to process communication by relying on the network layers host to host communication services. So transport layer does so without any knowledge about how the network layer actually implement this service. So in this lecture, we will try to learn how the network layer actually implements the host-to-host -host communication service. And as we have seen that in the application and transport layer and now in the network layer, uh, there is a kind of a big difference that unlike the transport and application layer uh, there is a piece of network layer in each and every host and routers we can find out. Network layer is also one of the most complex layers in the protocol stack in our five layers OSI model. We'll begin with an overview of network layer and the services that it can provide. We'll then examine closely two different structure of delivering the packets, particularly in the context of networking layer. And they are one of one of them you probably already aware of. One of them is datagram and another one is basically virtual circuit model. <coughs> we we'll make an important distinction also between routing and forwarding function of the networking layer. So forwarding involves the transfer of the packet from an incoming link to an outgoing link within a single specific router. Whereas, in case of routing, it involves all of a network's router whose collective interaction via the routing protocols basically helps determine the entire paths that the packet should follow from the starting point, which is basically from the source to the end point, which is basically the destination node. Okay, <clears throat> next we will discuss about the network layer packet delivery, the datagram and the virtual circuit model. We will look inside a router at its hardware architecture and organization. We will look at packet forwarding in the internet along with the internet protocol, IP link. We will investigate network layer addressing and the IPv4 datagram formatting will then explore network address translation which is also known as NAT then the fragmentation of the datagram and the ICMP internet control message protocol and after all IPv6 internet protocol version 6 will then discuss about the network layers routing function We'll first study the theory of different types of routing algorithm and definitely we'll look into link state and distance vector routing algorithm and then we'll be looking into uh, a combination of these two and as well as a hierarchical routing approach. We'll then see how basically this theory can be used in practice. There are some protocols like uh, RIP and OSPF 
uh, which has implemented the intra-autonomous system routing protocol that is basically if you consider within an organization like within an UMBC uh, how do you route the packets then probably the RIP and OSPF would be a better choice but if you go beyond a specific organization like beyond the University of Maryland Baltimore County our campus and you want to connect the internet system on this campus with the internet system on probably the College Park campus then probably you have to look into some inter-autonomous routing protocol which is basically the BGP so we'll be discussing all those details about those about the theory of those routing algorithms and their implementation too So in the network layer, segments of train from the transport layer are encapsulated in datagrams and delivered to the receiving side where the datagrams are decapsulated and segments are basically transferred to the upper layer, to the transport layer. So one point to note here is that all the five layers from the OSI model basically reside on the end host systems whereas the other three layers which are basically the network, data link and physical layers switch, physical layers reside basically on the router and link layer switches. So again unlike the transport and application layer so you'll find a piece of network layer in each and every host and as well as on the router and on the on the link list switches which are basically the core components of this network architecture. So now we'll be looking into the key network layer function. So the two key network layer function are basically the forwarding and the routing. So forwarding refers to route a local action to transfer a packet from an input link interface to the appropriate output link interface. Whereas the routing refers to the network wide process that determines the end-to-end -end paths that packet takes from source to destination. So forwarding is, if you can think of, is similar to moving through the traffic intersection points like turning on or driving to the north, south or east, west direction in an intersection, whereas routing is basically is an end-to-end -end process of planning the entire trip from source to final destination. So now let's look into the interplay between these routing and forwarding function. So every router has a forwarding table. But how does it get configured? How the forwarding tables in the routers are propagated? So basically there are routing algorithms which determine the values that should be inserted into the router's forwarding table. The routing algorithm, they might be centralized, they might be distributed. If those routing algorithms are centralized, then probably with an algorithm running on a central repository site and downloading all those routing information to each of the routers and providing this forwarding information to a single router and in case of a dis distributed or decentralized approach we might have a piece of distributed routing algorithm running on each and every router. Okay, so, so far we have discussed two important functions of networking layer. One is the forwarding and another one is the routing. But there is another third component, 
are the important network layer function, which is basically the connection theta. So if you can recall at the transport layer we have discussed uh, multiple times how does TCP set up the connection and we discussed the three-way handshaking and within the three-way handshaking the client and server needs to ex exchange the sequence number and the initial flow control and the congestion window size and all those parameters even before they can exchange data from from sender side to the receiver side. So similarly in the networking layer, uh, for some specific architecture like uh, ATM, asynchronous transfer mode, or frame relay, or X.25, or there are another one, another different architecture like MPLS, they require that the routers along the chosen path from source to destination to handset each to handshake with each other some of the information state information and some of the router information and this process is basically known as uh, connection setup so let us look into like uh, after discussing this forwarding routing and connection setup like what type of services that network layer could offer so basically the services the network uh, layer could offer it may vary from from one type to another so like when the transport layer at a sending host transmit a packet into the network can the transport layer rely on the on the net network layer to deliver the packet successfully to the destination or let us consider another Another point, when multiple packets are being sent uh, by an AIM system, will they be delivered to the transport layer in the receiving host in, the, in a specific order in which uh, they are being sent? And what about the time? Will the amount of time between the sending of two sequential packet transmission be the same? as the amount of time between their reception at the receiving end what about the congestion in the network so we have discussed in the transport layer the concept of tcp congestion and so in case of network layer will the network provide any feedback about congestion in the network to the to the sender or what is the abstract view of the channel connecting the transport layer uh, with the sending and the receiving host? So to answer this question, we need to look into the network layer service model. So when a transport layer passes a packet to the network layer, the specific services that could be provided by the network layer are guaranteed delivery of the packets or might be the guaranteed delivery of a packet with a specific delay or with a bounded delay which might be less than for in this case for example might be within 40 milliseconds or consider uh, the services uh, the network layer could provide for a flow of uh, packets or, if for, or for a flow of data grounds and over there also, the services might be like in-order packet delivery or guaranteed minimum bandwidth or guaranteed maximum jitter or delay or the different aspects of security. So, so far this is only a partial list of services that we have discussed the network layer could provide and there are numerous and countless variations of these services so in the uh, so the internet basically uh, the, uh, the if you consider the architecture is uh, internet and then the service model in the network layer so in the network layer the service model could provide basically the best effort services which basically does not provide any guarantee on timing or bandwidth or delay or loss 
Whereas if you consider the other architecture like ATM, MPLS, you might get some guarantee with respect to the service model or with respect to bandwidth loss or, or packet delivery order or, or the timing. So in case of ATM, we are seeing CVR like constant bit rate or VVR, variable bit rate or for ABR, average bit rate, basically it refers to the average amount of data transferred per unit of the time or EBR, unspecified uh, bit rate. And as well as the congestion, there are like in case of uh, best effort service, you see there is no congestion control in the networking layer. Whereas we have seen that uh, in the transport layer, basically for TCP, there is a specific congestion control strategy.